This is the city of Yosu looking over the Bay of Suncheon, right at the bottom of South Korea. It is a tourist city with so much to offer, and that's why you have plenty streaming in also here for the HSBC BWF Korea Open 2023, right here at the Jinnam Stadium. Yosu has not hosted this tournament since 2002, 21 long years. And here we have the head of the Sports Council, the Yosu Sports Council, bringing in the trophy that they're all fighting for. That is Myung Kyung Sik, president of the Yosu Sports Council. And they're all looking at uh, winning that, for getting to the World Tour Finals, which takes more significance in an Olympic qualification year. Let's tell you the order of play here at the finals, the big one here. It's mixed doubles that gets us going. It's an all-China affair. Jiang Zhenfang and Wei Yashin, the eight seeds, take on Feng Yangtze and Wang Dongping, the relatively new pair. They are seeded number four. Into the women's doubles, and this one will get the fans excited. Chen Qingchen, Jia Yifan, the top seeds, one number one pairing from China, take on Kim So Yong and Kong He Yong. And I think, uh, no doubt about the standout match today, and that's going to be in the women's singles. Tai Tzu Ying, the fourth seed from Chinese Taipei, will take on home favorite, the second seed, An Su Yang. Is there anyone else in better form at the moment? Into men's singles, and perhaps two names that many might not quite have expected in the finals, but Lo Kian Yu in his first final since January of last year, the fourth seed former world champion, takes on Denmark's Anders Antonsen. And finally, to round things off in the men's doubles, uh, they fell just short last year. Fajr Alfian and Mohamed Rian Ardiyal, so the top seeds from Indonesia, will take on India's Satvik Sarek Surankiredi and Chirag Shetty. So our attention is with the first match. It's the uh, mixed doubles. An all-China affair, you can see China very strong in the quarter-final stage, separated out the semis. And here they are meeting each other in the final. Good result there in the semis as well, as you saw. We'll have more details on that in just a short while. Remember, the race to the finals at the end of the year, that's a culmination of all that has been done this year. It's the top eight pairings go through, though no team or country can have more than two. So Korea have already fulfilled, as of now, their quota. Well, the fans have been streaming in. They love their badminton here in Korea. And as, as I said, Yosu has not had top-notch badminton in a long, long time. A city of about 270,000. So first up through Jefferson Bang and Wei Yashin. And uh, somewhere behind them, the other Chinese pairing of Feng Yangtze. And here's Wang Gongping. So they've met twice before, Feng and Huang have won both of those. Look at that, very comfortable at the Singapore Open just a short while ago, last month in fact. So they will come into this as the favourites. Remember, they've just got paired together towards the end of last year. Wei Yashin is uh, 23 years of age. And uh, from Hunan, currently 10th in the world. Though they've been a slightly higher at 9th. They have an eight, they're Asian champions at the moment as well. And they've won three titles together. Jiang Tenbang is 22. Just about, just over six foot from Guilin. And this year alone, they've won the uh, Ruchong China Masters and the Swiss Open. They will run us up at the Indonesia Masters. So four finals. This is their route in, and that's a fantastic result against the third seeds. Yuta Watanabe 
and Arisa Higashino. Wang Dongping is 28, 165 from the south of China, Fujian. She's fourth in the world. Of course, she was number one when she was partnered with Wang Yi Liu. Uh, but that partnership has sort of had its up and downs in recent times, and then she swapped over. She is an Olympic champion from uh, the 2020 Games. More on that in a short while. Feng Yang Te is a very tall man at 195 from Tianjin. Uh, playing in his current highest ranking. World Junior Champion, mixed doubles winner in 2019. These two have won three titles together. They haven't dropped a game so far, but look at that result in the semi-finals against Boa Veronica and Teratanisha, the second seeds. Won it straight, 45 minutes. This year alone, they've won Indonesia Masters, the Thailand Masters and the German Open. Runners-up at the Malaysia Masters as well. Fifth final of the year. Kang Sun Yong of Korea is the umpire. Kim Hyun Yuk. Here's the uh, service judge. So looking at Huang Dongping's record, for her, when she was Wang Liliu, she went to 28 finals, winning 12 and losing 16. So a lot of finals, but not always winning them. More often than not, not winning them. With her new partner, they've been to six finals, won three and lost three. As for Wei Ashin, well, just uh, mentioning earlier, as she's talking about Huang Dongping, an Olympic champion, world championship. She's had a, a silver in uh, 2018, a bronze in 2019, a bronze last year as well. And that was with Wang Yi Liu. Times have changed though. Mixed doubles, she got a bronze in the Asian Games in 2018. She gets to defend that or do even better in the upcoming Asian Games. And she is a former Asian champion in 2018 and 2019. Last year, she got a silver. She has won a whopping 11 titles, or 10 titles in mixed doubles. Wang Yilu and her are very successful. Just have some uh, audio issues as you may have uh, just seen. Bear with us on that one. Oh, she had to run away. She was off the court there. Wang Dongping. Pulled over, didn't it? <laughs> well, this is an excellent start, really, from uh, Jung and Wei. There's plenty of uh, China support here, as you can imagine. Oh. 
Well, Funk just trying to change the angle up and looking for that little gap. It's been a decent start, hasn't it, for all? Funk, or rather for Jung and Wei. Two metres tall, you added the jump, you added the racket. It's more than three metres coming down that height. Yeah, that's coming down at a real height, not easy at all to deal with that. So in terms of finals for Wei Yashin and Jiang Zhangbang, they've only been to four, but they've won three of them. They've won the last two, the Swiss Open and the China Masters. And in three of the four that they've been in, they've faced Chinese opposition, but not of this caliber and they've won two of those three finals so this is a very different prospect overall Zhang and Wei have faced nine Chinese opponents together and they've won seven out of nine that's a very good record to just show what they can do. Good reactions there from Funk. That was an awkward one there for Wei Yashin just to play that. Very close to her body. Well left. Really good read on that on the serve. Yeah, just knew, just sensed it, didn't he? Really well placed by Wade. They're only a point behind. Well, after it looked like it might have been that surge. Yeah, very good record, as I said, against uh, fellow Chinese. Now, Huang Dongping, in her career, when she was Wang Liliu in finals, they went to 16 finals together. They won five and lost 11 of them against Chinese opposition. Uh, but most of the time it's because it was Zhang Zewei and Huang Yachong. And uh, they tended to lose to them, except when it mattered most at the Olympics, when they won that. But uh, when with her current partner, they've met Chinese opposition twice, won one and lost one. And the one they lost was unsurprisingly against Tung Tzu Wei and Wang Yachong. The one they won was against this pair at the Indonesia Masters. Just perhaps in two minds there. Fung, or Jiang rather. 
here. Couldn't quite decide what he wanted to do. Again, the funk just hesitated there. Looking at the stop drop, I think he looked at it again and felt, yeah, it was a stop drop, wasn't it? And right at the top of the tape, a little groan from the crowd. I think they're the uh, who the crowd's going for. So at the interval here, Feng and Huang have the lead, 11-8. Been a fairly tight so far. We've seen also what Jung and Wei can do. Feng and Huang. Actually, I've not played that many Chinese opposition in their time together at all in all rounds. They've only played four times against Chinese opposition. And uh, they've won two and lost two. The, the two that they've won are against this very pair. Chan Chang Bang and Wei Ya Xin. Just a little too long, Rosa. There's a little bit of drift perhaps coming from that end. So we've seen a number of shots go just a tad long from there. Keep an eye out for that today. It's a small arena, this one. Cheap point given away by Fung into the net. That's frustrating. Still two points, really not much in it at the moment. Quite close. Oh, really well placed. Well, it was all about that initial shot from Funk. That had their opponents stretching. There you go. Beautifully done. And Jiang, there's not much he can do. He's got to dive. And delivering it from there, you know that it's not going to be at a height that's going to cause too many problems. And Wang Dongping, she's not going to miss that, is she? Really nice service return.
good power. The lead is fine. This is good. They're in a, setting themselves up to be in a very good position here, just towards the business end of this first game. Excellent from Huang and Feng. We've got the audio fixed though, the umpire, that's good. They, this is running away, isn't it, from uh, Jung away. needed something they had to just peg back their opponents here Jung and Wei desperate to stop that progression of points remember it was 12 10 not too long ago 4-1 since then So they stopped that run of uh, four points and now going in a little run of their own. So world number four versus the world number ten. And uh, they've played very similar amounts of matches together. And this is a very good run, three in a row. The lead is only three. Yeah, Chiang and Wei have played 60 matches together. They won 50 of them. Whereas uh, Feng and Huang have played 51 matches together and won 40 of them. Oh, that was one and he couldn't put away. Just going below the tape as he took it. Feng will be frustrated. One he really ought to be finishing off. Yeah, Jung and Wei, an 83% win rate in their career so far as a partnership. 78 or so percent for Feng and Huang. And this year alone, Jung and Wei. They've won 31 out of 39 matches, that's 80%. It's actually a little bit lower than what they, their career average is, whereas for Feng and Huang, they've won 27 out of 34, which is uh, almost 80% as well. Incredible. Which is about on par for them. And uh, you just feel they're going to get better and better. Easy one to put away there for Chia. The lead is only cut to two. It was 16-10. They won five out of the last six points, Jung and Wei. Excellent comeback here. Is the lead and three is the need. Let's see how Feng and Huang finishes off, and that is just a bit long. Oh, 
Oh, nicely done by Fuck. Four game points now for Feng and Huang. Huang, get ready. the first game done and dusted really not too many problems for Feng and Huang didn't perhaps start at their very best here and Zhang Wei put a little bit of pressure on them at the beginning and the quality saw Feng and Huang through in the end it's uh, a tough ask here for uh, Zhang and Wei but there will have been some signs for them of uh, optimism. So first game goes to Feng and Huang. 21-16. Zhang Wei have taken them to three before that Indonesia Masters final. Let's see if they can do that here. So, second game here, and Feng and Huang looks pretty dominant, you'd have to say. But little signs, positive signs there for Jiang and Wei as well. And there you go. Now, just to, to remind you, in the Indonesian Masters at the start of the year, Feng and Huang won the first game 21-15. Zhang Wei took the next 21-16. And the third was really tight. Feng and Huang winning that one 21-19. Singapore Open, very different story. Feng and Huang won that less than half an hour. 21-14, 21-9. So we've had two contrasting matches. And, and also, you've got to say, the form kind of goes out the window full book and ranking, all that kind of thing goes out the window when you're playing <laughs> home versus home. It means uh, two from the same country.
Three, yeah, speaking to uh, one of our fellow commentators, Chris Langridge, who's uh, an Olympic bronze medalist, he, he said that quite often he was involved where he was high, high ranked and lo lost to lower ranked opponents uh, from England. Because they, they spar Three, against you, they train against four. you, they are very aware what you can they can do and what they can also get inside your head a little bit. The pressure's on you when you're the higher ranked player. And uh, these lower ranked ones may we just have a few tricks up their sleeve and know things that uh, foreign opponents wouldn't. It's an interesting perspective that. And uh, one I'm sure that Chung and Wei will be hoping for to give them a bit of that extra boost. Yashin and uh, Danton Bao have only ever played five times against top five opponents. That's actually not a bad record. They've won twice and lost three times. In fact, the last two times that they played top five opponents was right here. For them to be able to beat Huang Ya Chong and Tung Tsui is absolutely outstanding. And then now they're the number one pairing in the world. They're the they're the, normally the bane of Huang Dongping's existence. So they'd be relieved that they don't have to play them today. Now Huang Dongping felt that that might have just brushed. The shorts have a well, it's hard to see here. Oh, Jiang, oh, can't see that, it's tough. Oh, maybe here, let's have a look. We might get a view of it here, it's tough. Come on. Come on, get she was kind of protesting that. I think that was a, a bit of a, a shot in the dark, if you will. Just a try a luck type of thing. Good placement there from Huang. Yeah, um, the two times they've won has been the last two matches. So they will be in decent form. They also beat Watanabe and Higashino in the semis. These are two tough, tough opponents to beat along the way. So one number one and one number two. No, did it make it? I think it was goal. That was time. And Fung has challenged that. That's one again. I think he will feel he ought to put away. Well, I think that's out. But let's see. Oh, very, very close. But it is, I think, going to be out. Yeah. It's tight, but it is out. <laughs> That's his expression. Oh, I'm sure he knew that that was always going to be a hard one. Good defending there. And I, again, I think Jung was a little lost. He looked almost, uh, wasn't sure what to do there. Yeah, there, that shot made it a little bit difficult. Just got to it a little late and scratching in the back of his head afterwards. 
Yeah, again, just a, a, a very momentary bit of hesitation. for Feng and Huang. In there again, slightly hesitant. <laughs> it's just gone a little long again. Well, it, it was around, this was the point where they just started to move ahead around here. I think they had an 11 8 lead in the last interval. So at the interval, it's 11 7, Feng and Huang. And game two, having already won the first. That was that was tight, and, and just with that, perhaps that little drift that we've been talking about, it was perhaps a hope from uh, Chang Wei that it would keep it in. Yeah, actually, quite clearly out in the end, wasn't it? Awkward, just shift there.
out. We saw uh, a five-point lead at a similar sort of stage. It was 15-10, if you recall, in the last game. And put Feng and Huang in a really good in pole position there, you'd say. But then a nice fight back from Zhang Wei. They need something similar here. Yeah, just uh, you just saw there Wei Yashin just losing her footing, making sure that was uh, wiped down quickly. Just a little long, and this is now looking 16, pretty tough. Remember, it's 15 10 in the last game when Jung away started to fight back. They have to do it right now, or this final is done and dusted. They need to peg back Feng and Huang here, right now. Six points behind and with only five needed from Feng and Huang. Clipping the nets, snatching at it, and it's just starting to move away. Nice little shot there from Jump, but has it come a little too late? Oh, well, yeah, Shin who did that rather. What I had a sorry there, I think, from the partners. Seven clear now, three more required. Now just a quick wipe down here as the two pairs Howl off quickly and think what they need to do here. Feng and Huang in an excellent position. Just three more points required. Such a 
a successful career. Wang Dongping has never won their career open. She got to the final in 2017. And the only other appearance was in 2019 when she was out in the first round, amazingly enough. This is Feng Yang Tzu's debut performance in the in this tournament. And it's the same for this pairing here as well. Wang Yashin and Dan Tengpang. So to get to the final is, is very impressive. But Wang Dongping wants to get one further than she did a few years ago. But they're just getting delayed here for now, it would appear. of them now for Huang Dongping and Fen Yang Tse. They've won three events this year. They've been in two other finals. Oh, great reactions there. They keep it alive. And they finish it off, Wang Dongping! Fittingly enough, she finally wins the career open. It's title number four for Wang Dongping and Feng Yang Tzu. This year keeps getting better and better for this relatively new pairing. And truth be told, they never looked uncomfortable here. Just a little bit of a slow start. But after that, they never look back. And when you look at the trajectory of this game, they have been absolutely outstanding. Only twice in the match, right at the start of each game, did they let their opponents have a lead. And it was very, very brief indeed. So they have pretty much led throughout. This is becoming quite the pairing, isn't it? With Wang Dongping and Feng Yangtze, one to watch out for in the Olympics, perhaps as well. Should love another gold medal. This time it could be with a different partner. Let's see. But also, let's give credit to their opponents today, Zhang Chengbang and Wei Yashin, who beat world number one and two to get here. So Feng Yang Chen, Wang Dongping, the Chinese four seeds, beat the eight seeds, compatriots Chen Tenbang and Wei Yashin, 21-16, 21-13. They've done it in just 39 minutes. And we'll have that prize presentation for you very shortly indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, now we will have award ceremony for Mixed Double of 2023 Korea Open Badminton Championships, part of the HSC BWF World Tour Super 500. Welcome medalist and prize presenter.
중국의 티안진 방 웨이아신 루노 지엔진 방 웨이아신 차이나 우승 중국의 팽양정 황동핑 챔피언 팽양정 황동핑 차이나 네, 메달 및 꽃다발 수여는 송진호 전남남조 체육회 회장님께서 수고해 주시겠습니다. 메달 및 플라워 프레젠티드 바이 미스터 송진호 프레젠 오브 전라남도 스포츠 카운셀 이어서 상금 수여는 명경식 여수시 체육회 회장님께서 함께 해주시겠습니다. Pride Board presented by Mr. 명경식, President of Yosu Sports Council. 2013 Interesting, since 2010, China have dominated this event. They've now won 8 out of 12 mixed doubles titles, and 67% of them of the mixed doubles titles have gone to China. And by the way, China continue the incredible run in this event since 2010. They have won at least one event every year. And that, of course, continues today with an all-China final. Yeah, fantastic. Mixed doubles man. Don't, don't forget, you've got incredible mixed doubles pairings. Uh, from China. To be uh, that dominant. Interestingly enough, as I said, Wang Dongping and Wang Yu, when they were so dominant, didn't win this, and neither did Wang Yuchong and Jungs away. Anyway, up next, it's a women's doubles final. Chung Ching Chen Jai Fan of China versus Kim So Yong and Kong Hyung of Korea. That's going to be tasty. That's up next.
Welcome back here to Yosu for the HSBC BWF Career Open 2023. This is a Super 500. It's finals day here. We just had the mixed doubles final going Feng Yangtze and Huang Dongping's way. Now we're into the women's doubles. Can China make it two out of two? Chen Qingchen and Jia Yifan, the top seeds, are up against home favorites here. Kim so 